Man, you guys have no idea what a time I've had setting this whole thing up for you guys so I can share this bit of information I got. The lighting situation in my living room is absolutely terrible. Worst possible conditions, so please ignore the spotlight that's right here because this is the camera that I'll probably be talking on most, so the subject is the TV. But right now I gotta reintroduce myself. Hey, welcome back to New Stuff TV, the Untechnical Tech Channel. I'm your host, Antoine. Give me some of that Adobe Atmos Richardson because today we're gonna be taking a slight deep dive into the settings of the Sony HTA 5000. Or if you got a 7000 or a 3000 or a 2000, it's probably gonna work the same. So check this out, when I first got this thing, you know, you open it up and you set it up and everything, you go into the settings, Sony kind of walks you through like an automated setup and does everything for you. And it sounds fantastic coming right out of the box. I loved it. But I did happen to go into some stuff and like, I don't know, I was trapped in the, in the forums, man. You know how we do it when we start deep diving. And I started seeing people complain about how they had low volume. And then at some point I kind of moved some stuff around and I started feeling like I had low volume. Where it was, I would turn it up to you know volume level 30 and that was like peak for me. I didn't need any more. I started feeling like, you know, I needed to turn it up to like 40, 50. And I was like, what happened to my system? It's because I did something. So I started deep, uh, deep diving a little bit and uh, went into the forums and I saw that other people were having similar problems where they turn some things on or off or they, just, ah, nobody really found a true fix. And I still don't think there is one. I think you just gotta tweak it. So there wasn't really a proper settings for these sound bars. The proper settings is what's gonna be right for you. But I can tell you how, you know, some ways that you can dig in there and get the most out of it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cross over here to where my bad lighting setup is, and then I am going to hit the home button on the sound bar. So let me hit that home button, make sure I'm in the line of sight. Okay, so this is home, right? This is your sound bar home system. Can you guys see me over there? Okay, there you go, hey man. <laughs> so we go into the home screen, go into setup, and then you go into advanced settings. Boom, right there. Then you go into speaker settings. So if you did this the right way, which is the way Sony kind of just walks you through initially when you set up the sound bar, you go, you're gonna see in here where it says, uh, it's kind of, it's grayed out right now. It says speaker settings information, manual speaker settings value. Uh, that is grayed out. You can't do anything about it. You can go into sound field optimization, which is fantastic because you do need that because that's how the speakers, you see the subwoofer over there, the sound bar, and the rear speakers, they're gonna talk to each other and let each other know how far they are away, how much noise they need to make so they can create that space bubble around you for the Dolby Atmos, right? You do need to do that, okay? That is very important. Actually, uh-oh, I hit it. Let me stop it. Dang it, I didn't mean to do it. Okay, let's cancel that. <laughs> so there you go, that's how that works, right? As soon as that comes back. Now, we are in sound field optimization. That's where we were. Now, we will come out of this because this is not where we need to be right now because we need to ungray some of these features. So we're going to audio settings, okay? Boom. Three, uh, 360 spatial uh, sound mapping, that is on. That is why everything else is grayed out. So I'm gonna turn it off, okay? So if I turn it off, now it unlocks sound field setting. And then you can go into the Sony Virtual Sound Engine, Dolby Speaker Virtualizer, DTS Neutral X. I'm gonna stay right here and hang out in Sony Vertical uh, Surround Engine. That's, that's where you need to hang out, man. Trust me, don't, don't mess with that. What you need to go, what you need to do is go back, make sure DSEE Extreme is on, Make sure audio DRC is auto. Make sure advanced auto volume is on, okay? Don't mess with that either. What you really need to be messing with is speaker settings. Now you'll see that speaker settings information is not grayed out anymore. Okay, so let's go in here, man. Let's do this. It says manual, uh, manual speaker settings volume or uh, sound field optimization. Now, typically, Mine is locked in on sound field optimization. I was messing around with it earlier, getting ready for this video, and that's why initially you saw it on manual speaker settings volume, uh, value, because I was messing with it. Typically, it is locked on sound field optimization value. This is what I'm gonna do. Go in here to manual, okay? And then you go into manual speaker settings. That is not grayed out anymore, because now you can manipulate it. Then we see all of this right here. You got the distance. You got the distance to a sidewall, distance to the ceiling. You can touch this up however you want to, okay? All right, let's go into distance uh, from the sidewall. So we got six and a half feet, six and a half feet on the right as well, okay? And you see that right there. Distance to the ceiling, you can check that one out. Seven and a quarter foot, rear speaker, seven and a quarter foot. This is all stuff that I actually did myself, okay? 
And then we get into what I feel is really important for this particular video, and that is the levels, okay? So initially, I cranked all these up, man, because I wasn't, I was not getting the volume that I needed. So the front speakers, I had it cranked up to like three. So you can go up to three. You just hit, hit the center button, crank it up. You go half a, half a decibel each, each uh, click. I had mine up to like three. Now I don't feel like I need it. Everything kind of just went back to normal. The height speakers, and it shows you what speakers you're messing with. So we'll go ahead and click that. We'll go into height. I've got mine still cranked up to one because I want a little bit more height in my Atmos experience. Then you got your beam tweeters on the side. Let me go down. <coughs> Excuse me. You got your beam tweeters on the side. You see, I've got mine half a click up. Subwoofer. Dude, I had it cranked up because I wasn't getting enough bass. I had it cranked up to like six. But then all of a sudden, you know, it started sounding good to me again. And so I had to bring it back down, okay? So I brought it back down to zero. But the rear speakers, I still keep them turned up a notch. I got the rear left and right on three, and I got the rear height on five, okay? Because I like that Dolby Atmos. When I can get Dolby Atmos, I want it all, okay? So I have this manually set. Now, one would think once you actually manually set these and then you go back, which I'm doing right now, I go back all the way to here, this page where it says uh, speaker settings information, manual speaker settings value. You would think that if I put it on sound field optimization value, it actually cancels out everything I just did, all the work I just did. It does not. It still maintains, let me click that. It still maintains everything that you just did. I was thinking, just like you were probably thinking, as soon as you switch it, it's just gonna cancel out everything you did. No, it holds on to those values. And our values. And when you watch content, you'll still hear, hear the elevation of the sound or the increasing of the volume that you just did. So leave that to where it was and then put it back on sound field optimization, optimization value. And then we go back. Uh, where was I? Okay. Then we go back. Oh yeah. It took out manual speaker settings. Now it's gray again, right? So everything is back to kind of what the original settings were, except in the background, we have it, you know, we tweaked it a little bit. So it's like a layer of tweaking, right? And then you got Sony's layer and then you got your layer mixed in there. So it's it's almost like having a preset that you can tweak. That's, that's pretty much what I could compare this to as far as an EQ goes. Then we'll go back to audio settings and then we'll see the spatial surround uh, sound mapping is off. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Trust me, man, it's not gonna cancel out all your work you just did. Turn that back on and we are finished. You see, I still have the Sony Virtual Surround Engine on. Everything is back on. The only thing we changed was some of those decibel values on each individual speaker. It's the only thing we changed. Then once you go back to watch your content, everything is gonna sound fantastic. And of course, you're gonna have to go back and kind of tweak it because it might be too loud. Uh, might be, you know, whatever. It might be a little off. So go back and tweak it if you need to. But once you're done tweaking it, Go ahead and come back and watch your content and make sure you've got everything the way you wanted it. Because in my case, I turned up the um, the front speakers, uh, the center speaker channels. I turned them up a little too high, right? And they were just kind of just screaming at me. So I had to go back in there and turn them down. But then once again, I put everything back like I found it and now it's perfect, okay? So make sure you do that. Just play around with that stuff. But that is one thing I, I, I have to say I'm, I'm not a fan of as far as the soundbar system interface is that you can't do this stuff in real time. I would love to have like, I don't know, like on the TV menu, how you can do some settings in real time on the TV menu at the bottom of the screen, right here at the bottom. You know, on the Sony TVs, it just pops up at the bottom. You can do it every, in real time. With this soundbar, you have to do it. You have to go home to this screen, do your uh, settings tweaks, and then you have to back out and then you have to go back to your content. That's kind of, you know, it's really jarring and it's hard to figure out what you did and how everything sounds. Cause it's like, by the time you make a setting adjustment, it, like a full 30 seconds to a minute is gone by, by the time you get to sample that content again. So that's the only thing that you're gonna run into as far as like speed bumps on that. But hopefully this video was helpful in helping you dig into the settings because Typically, you would think that once you actually set this up using the presets that Sony kind of, you know, gives you as you set it up, and once you put it, you know, once you let it automate itself in that way, you feel like any adjustments you make are going to be canceled out. That's what my brain tells me. In this case, it's not. It just happened to work for me. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. Make sure you just tweak your settings to the way you like them because there is no perfect settings for sound. Sound is subjective. Whatever you like is what you like. Whatever you like is the best out there.
So go ahead and start tweaking your systems, man. Remember, I'm not an expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is my stuff sound good, man. So y'all gotta get out of here so I can get back to doing my thing. See y'all when I see you.